Did you know that in some countries women are not allowed to laugh? Or that in another country women face immense pressure to get married? These things may seem like they belong in a science fiction movie, but they are the daily reality for women in China and North Korea. Join us as we explore the surprising stories of their lives. Eight deadly issues single women in China are facing. Can you believe that in China all women over 27 years old are considered surplus women, looked down upon by society? Traditionally, marriage and family have been highly valued as they represent social stability, but nowadays more and more women are unwilling to marry and have children. Let's explore the eight deadly issues that single women in China are facing. Number 8. Chinese women are indifferent to marriage. According to official data, China's single population over 15 years old reached a record 239 million people in 2021. The 2021 survey found that among approximately 2,900 unmarried urban youths, 44% of women expressed their intention to remain single for life. Only 6.8 million couples got married in 2022, the lowest number since dating was encouraged in 1986. Many online communities have been established to help women who prefer single lifestyles find like-minded friends. Posts with hashtags like no marriage, no children by influential women on social media often receive thousands of likes. On another social media platform, a topic supporting the trend of remaining single has attracted 9,200 members. A forum dedicated to singlehood has 3,600 members mainly discussing collective retirement plans and other topics. According to China's Ministry of Civil Affairs, the highest number of marriages in the country occurred in the past decade. At that time, men and women fulfilled their traditional roles of getting married and having children. However, today's young people seek love and personal satisfaction, making it increasingly difficult to marry and choose compatible partners. Number 7. Risk of Domestic Violence because of the deeply ingrained tradition of male superiority over women, many Chinese men consider themselves superior to their wives, leading to domestic violence. Especially if women do not work, they are very likely to face violence. For example, a husband verbally abused his wife for three hours shortly after she gave birth, which happened in Anhui Province, eastern China, on April 6, 2023. The husband continuously berated his wife with harsh words like what's there to cry about, stop crying, you idiot, and even threatened the woman's life. Earlier, the wife had just undergone a caesarean section. The reason behind the verbal abuse was that the wife forgot to tell the doctor that she had no breast milk, meaning she couldn't breastfeed the child, leading to the doctor inadvertently stimulating milk secretion. More than 90 million married women in China often face domestic violence. On average, about 157,000 women commit suicide each year, making the country one of the few with a higher female suicide rate than male. Of those, 60% commit suicide due to domestic violence. This widespread issue in China makes many women afraid of getting married or having children. Number 6. Matchmaking Markets in China Have you ever heard of the concept of matchmaking markets in China? If you haven't, then the issue of women in this country not wanting to marry has become so widespread in China that many parents have to display their children at these markets to find a spouse for them. An example of this can be seen in central Beijing, where parents often visit a matchmaking market called Zhongshan Park to fulfill the mission of finding the perfect spouse for their children. In Guangxi, there are also parents' parents participating in these markets to find partners for their children. Many fathers and mothers in Guangxi spend hours browsing through information about single people printed on paper, hoping to find a spouse for their children. In these matchmaking events, very few young people participate. Parents constantly visit these markets to advertise their children, similar to a market, in order to attract potential partners for their offspring. Most of these advertisements are for women looking to get married. Chinese parents complain that their children are very picky in choosing partners and set unrealistic standards for their spouses. This is why the marriage rate in China has plummeted and the number of single women in China is increasing according to recent statistics. These women not only demand education but also career opportunities. They want potential spouses to own houses, cars, have ambition and be tall and handsome. This makes it difficult for seemingly attractive, tall men, even if they don't have stable jobs, savings or their own homes, because they lack a sense of security. What do you think of this matchmaking market in China? Leave your comments below. Number 5. Women must sacrifice for husband and children. 
In China today, the idea that women must sacrifice for their husbands and children still runs deep in the subconscious of many people. Research shows that Chinese women have to juggle more household chores and childcare than men. Meanwhile, they also have to go out to work. This is no different from doing two jobs at once. The burden on the small shoulders of these women is thereby doubled. These women look at the previous generation's tradition of valuing men over women and believe that no matter how extremely successful or ordinary, women still have to sacrifice the most for household chores. Many people who married in the previous generation, especially women, sacrifice themselves and their careers without achieving happiness. Therefore, they don't want to live a life of sacrificing for men or families. When they return home, almost every mother is busy cooking, cleaning, bathing, feeding their children, all nameless but extremely time-consuming tasks. They have no time for themselves. Meanwhile, playing with children is seen by fathers as helping, sharing. It's to reduce the burden on their wives rather than considering it the responsibility of a husband. These things easily lead to women becoming depressed after marriage and childbirth, leading to many unfortunate cases. What do you think of the sacrifices of Chinese women? Leave your comments below. Number 4 fear of living with the husband's family. The traditional family in China consists of multiple generations living together, and marriage will change many things in a woman's life, because usually wives have to move in and live with the husband's family. It's relationships with both sides of the family, then relatives, friends, living with the husband's family will suffocate and overwhelm women. On the Taiwan News Forum, a girl shared the differences in living habits that made her extremely uncomfortable living with her parents-in-law, even though she had just gotten married. The woman complained that when living with her in-laws, her in-laws did not allow many lights to be turned on at home, often used leftovers from previous meals, and especially saved water her in-laws required their children to urinate twice before flushing the toilet. Moreover, with parents often present, couples cannot spend quality time together. In addition, because the house belongs to the parents, it is very difficult to suggest that they give the couple private time. Living with the husband's family is a tradition in many Asian countries. This model inadvertently pushes two women, the mother-in-law and the daughter-in-law, into an unwanted battle under one roof. This makes women more tired because they cannot live their own lives. The fear of living with the husband's family is also the reason why they hesitate to marry and want to find a man with a stable house and finances. Number 3. Men's Patriarchal Ideology Many women cite key factors that lead them to decide to remain single and childless, including self-exploration, disillusionment with the patriarchal nature of Chinese men, and the lack of worthy partners. The patriarchal mindset of men is another reason why women in China want to remain single, as they have moved past traditional gender roles and stereotypes. Most men in China's social system are uncomfortable with women earning more than them. They believe that men in Chinese society should be the sole providers for their families, while women should stay at home and take care of children. However, women in China today disagree with this view and say that their careers are also important to them. Because of the deep-rooted feudal ideas from ancient times, men in China's social system are uncomfortable with women exceeding traditional standards of Chinese culture, which is why they choose not to marry. As a result, the number of single women in China has increased significantly. Number 2. Women prefer short-term relationships. Dating apps in China today have up to 150 million users, providing young people in China with an opportunity to find their lifelong love. However, there is another issue with these dating apps although the number of dating app users is increasing marriages are not. Short-term relationships are sought after more than long-term relationships. Therefore, even though dating apps are quite popular in China, they do not promote marriage. That is why traditional methods like arranged marriages are still common in China. Nowadays, many parents play dating apps in China just to find suitable matches for their daughters. Number 1. Women fear childbirth. As I mentioned earlier, Chinese women have gone through the one-child policy era. Both they and their parents' generation were convinced that it's better to have only one child. In the old society, girls were not valued. Girls in rural areas often face the risk of not being born or being abandoned shortly after birth. Some lucky ones survived, but their parents or relatives always advised them to dedicate themselves to their brothers, the true descendants of the family. Few rural girls go to school, most marry early, and parents use the bride price of their daughters to pay for their sons. Their ultimate fate is to continue the family line by giving birth to sons. 
Even now, there is a term leftover women used to refer to those who refuse to marry before the age of 27. On the internet, phrases like irresponsible single women and you are destroying the future of the nation are used to criticize women who don't have children. This makes women even more reluctant to marry and have children. Many also believe that the risk of damage during pregnancy and childbirth is very high, with each pregnancy significantly reducing a woman's health. Besides, childbirth often leads to job loss. But even after marriage, women are still forced to have two to three children, one of whom must be a son, and they are also responsible for household chores. So we've just explored the eight issues that single women in China are facing. The pressures from society, family, and expectations of marriage have made their lives more complicated than ever. But perhaps we would be even more surprised to learn that in another country, women have to face much stricter limitations. In North Korea, under the leadership of Kim Jong-un, women must adhere to a series of strict rules from hairstyles and clothing to even the way they think. Is there a common thread between the social pressures in China and the stringent rules in North Korea? Or are these two completely different realities? Join us as we explore the 23 strangest rules that North Korean women must follow to find out the answer. 23 Strange Rules North Korean Women Must Follow Number 23. Restrictions on contraceptives and sanitary pads. One extremely perplexing aspect is that essential items such as condoms, contraceptive pills and sanitary pads have become luxuries, often out of reach for most people, especially women. The harsh policies of the government banning the import of these products for many years have put women in a difficult situation regarding reproductive health. On the black market, condoms are almost impossible to find, making pregnancy prevention extremely challenging. The use of condoms is quite unfamiliar to North Koreans due to a lack of information and education on reproductive health. As for sanitary pads, instead of using convenient pads, North Korean women are forced to use cloth towels during their menstrual cycles. Washing and reusing these towels is not only unhygienic but also affects women's reproductive health. This is because the North Korean government encourages women to have many children to increase the population for the military and provide cheap labor. This policy disregards the widespread poverty and lack of essential needs for the people. Abortion is illegal and can lead to severe consequences such as imprisonment and social stigma. This leaves women with no choice but to bear and raise children, regardless of their economic conditions or personal health. What do you think about this? Share your views below. Number 22. Foreigners cannot photograph women. For foreign visitors to North Korea, interacting with locals is restricted by stringent regulations, particularly concerning women. Foreign tourists are not allowed to photograph or even speak with local women without government permission. Such actions can lead to severe consequences for both tourists and the women. Although local citizens are not as severely punished as tourists for interacting with foreigners, they can still face trouble and condemnation. Therefore, it is best for visitors to avoid any interaction with local women to ensure their safety and that of the women. If you visit North Korea, a tour guide will always accompany you and intervene if you attempt to take photos, especially in sensitive areas such as military zones. Violating this rule can result in serious penalties, including confiscation of cameras and even expulsion from the country. Number 21. Divorce is prohibited. Divorce in North Korea is a complicated and sensitive topic, differing significantly from many other countries. Influenced by culture, law, and social prejudices, divorce here is often difficult and rare. Divorce in North Korea requires a court decision, and mutual agreement is not a feasible method for divorce. Due to strict divorce standards and complex procedures, the divorce rate is relatively low. Furthermore, social stigma associated with divorce, especially for women, makes it a difficult choice. Divorced individuals receive new ID cards labeled divorced, prolonging the stigma. Additionally, married women with children may face discrimination if they divorce. A divorced daughter is already shameful enough, but a divorced daughter with a child will find it nearly impossible to remarry successfully. Adultery is one of the few cases that can lead to divorce. Although adultery is uncommon in North Korea, it still occurs, especially among individuals with high status protected from significant consequences. Those without high social status face not only divorce but also criminal punishment. What do you think about this? Share your thoughts. Number 20. Women cannot participate in music and movies. 
Another prohibition is that women participating in foreign music or films from other countries is considered a serious crime. This stringent regulation was tightened further in 2015, when Kim Jong-un ordered the destruction of all cassettes and CDs containing songs deemed inappropriate by the government. The purpose of this law is to prevent the expression of different opinions and control the information accessible to the public. Women are more likely to get into trouble for violating this law as they often spend more time on entertainment activities like watching movies and listening to music. The punishment for such violations depends on the origin of the music or film. For instance, watching American movies can result in the death penalty the most severe sentence while watching Indian movies can lead to imprisonment. The severity of the punishment can vary at the will of the North Korean government. The North Korean government is determined to block the infiltration of foreign culture and ideas into the country, fearing that these could lead people, especially women, to no longer follow their leadership, potentially causing social unrest. This law's impact on North Korean women is enormous. They are deprived of access to diverse forms of entertainment and information and live in fear of punishment for simple acts like listening to foreign music. Number 19. Strict Dress Code The government has imposed extremely strict dress codes for women. This rule demonstrates the state's tight control over every aspect of citizens' lives and shows discrimination against women. North Korean women usually wear simple, modest clothing as mandated by the state. On special occasions, they often wear the hanbok, the traditional Korean dress. Clothing colors must be bright, elaborate accessories and Western-style clothing are generally prohibited. Jeans, a symbol of Western culture, are absolutely forbidden for women. The ban on jeans stems from the North Korean government's hostility towards Western values. Leader Kim Jong-un sees blue jeans as a symbol of American influence and power, hence the absolute prohibition. The ban on jeans imposes many restrictions on North Korean women. They are not free to choose their clothing, affecting their ability to work and participate in social activities. In rural areas, this rule may be more relaxed, allowing women to wear pants in some cases. However, in the capital Pyongyang, the rule is strictly enforced. Besides the ban on jeans, North Korean women are also not allowed to wear trousers. This rule aims to ensure that women always look feminine and attractive to men. This strict dress code applies to everyone, including foreign tourists. Female visitors to North Korea must adhere to this rule to avoid trouble. Number 18. Women are not allowed to drive. In North Korea, women are forbidden from driving cars, a strange rule that has drawn considerable attention. The government claims that women cause too many accidents, though there is no concrete evidence to support this statement. Some believe that deeply ingrained sexism in North Korean society is the underlying reason for this ban. According to this belief, women should stay at home to take care of their families and should not engage in men's activities such as driving. The North Korean government argues that driving could be harmful to women. However, this reasoning is quite odd because North Korea has very few cars and traffic congestion been almost non-existent. North Korean women can work as traffic police, directing and managing road traffic, demonstrating their capability to drive safely, yet they are prohibited from driving personal vehicles. The ban on women driving in North Korea is a typical example of the restrictions women face in this society. Hopefully in the future, these regulations will be changed to ensure gender equality and provide women with more opportunities for development. Number 17. Seven years of military service. Since January 2015, North Korea's revised military service law mandates that women over 17 years old must serve in the military for seven years, according to Korea Times. Some reports indicate that women make up more than 10% of the North Korean military. Under the new law, the service period for men has also increased to 11 years from the previous 10 years. Initially, Pyongyang intended to extend men's service period to 13 years, but decided to increase women's service period to reduce the burden on men. North Korea amended its military service law because the youth eligible for conscription were born during the mid-1990s. During that time, a nationwide famine led to the deaths of 330,000 children. As a result, North Korea recruits women into the military to maintain its standing force. North Korea has one of the longest mandatory military service periods in the world. South Korean intelligence estimates that North Korea's standing military force exceeds 1.2 million soldiers, ranking it fourth in the world. What do you think about this? Share your thoughts. Number 16. Beauty Standards Regulations 
the North Korean government imposes extremely strict beauty and cosmetics regulations on women based on outdated and conservative views. These rules dictate which nail polishes and skincare products are permitted for use. Since World War II, makeup has been banned in North Korea due to political, economic, and cultural divisions with South Korea. Despite limited exposure to global fashion and beauty trends, many North Korean women still desire to use cosmetics, leading to the illegal smuggling of makeup into the country. To manage the situation, the government established a state-owned cosmetics company to control the production and distribution of beauty products. Red lipstick is banned as it is considered too bold and different from the government's recent stance. However, the government strongly advises against using red lipstick as it contradicts socialist principles. Despite this, some women still use red lipstick, though they typically opt for subtler shades that align with the regime's view of a simple appearance. What do you think about this? Share your thoughts below. Number 15. Banned from smiling. Everyone likes to smile in North Korea, but smiling on July 8th is illegal, especially for women, as this is the death anniversary of Kim Il-sung, the grandfather of the current leader, Kim Jong-un. Violating this rule can lead to severe consequences from being sent to a concentration camp to facing death. Not only smiling, but North Koreans are also prohibited from drinking alcohol or having noisy celebrations on this day. Even birthday parties are restricted to July 8th. Therefore, it is best to keep a serious demeanor and remain silent to show respect for Kim Il-sung. This somber attitude must be maintained beyond July 8th, especially on the 10th anniversary of Kim Illinois Sung's death. North Koreans are not allowed to participate in any festive or recreational activities, no partying, no shopping, and no entertainment. Number 14. Women banned from riding bicycles. Besides the controversy over driving, North Korean women face another restriction they are not allowed to ride bicycles by law. History shows a complex relationship between the North Korean government and bicycles. Unlike many other countries where bicycles have been widely accepted as a means of personal transportation for decades, North Korea has shown less interest. Until 1992, bicycles were completely banned on the streets of Pyongyang. This ban was strictly enforced, making bicycles a rare sight in the capital. The ban on women riding bicycles is believed to have been established by Kim Jong-il, the former North Korean leader. There are many reasons and rumors surrounding the origin of this rule. One explanation is that Kim Jong-il, known for his conservative views on women, believed that seeing women on bicycles could be too provocative and harmful to public morals. Another explanation suggests that women were considered genetically incapable of handling traffic, which is also why they are not granted driving licenses in North Korea. This argument implies that women could be dangerous on the streets even as cyclists. The ban on women riding bicycles was reportedly reinforced after a tragic accident involving the daughter of a high-ranking official. This incident is said to have influenced Kim Jong Illinois' decision, although the exact reasons behind North Korea's aversion to bicycles remain unclear. In 1995, women were officially banned from riding bicycles. Although this ban was temporarily lifted in 2012, it was reinstated in early 2013 and has been inconsistently enforced since then. The ban on women riding bicycles in North Korea is an example of the restrictions women face in this society. What do you think about this ban? Share your opinions below. Number 13. Mandatory to give birth to sons. In North Korea, the rule of having sons is very important, showing how the society values men over women. This belief deeply affects women because, in this society, men hold supreme power. Therefore, giving birth to sons is considered a top priority and sometimes mandatory for wives. According to traditional North Korean views, a woman's inability to bear a son is solely her responsibility and comes with serious consequences. Couples without sons, especially those with only one heir and no sons, face penalties including divorce and physical abuse. According to estimates by South Korea's population agency, up to 2 million North Korean women suffer from regular abuse, with one-third of them distressed for not bearing sons for their husbands. The North Korean government even allows divorce for the reason of not having a son, and after divorce, women usually receive very little or no property. These conditions may be why North Korean women are more likely to attempt escaping the country than men. What do you think about this? Share your opinions below. Number 12. Hairstyle Restrictions 
In this country, women's hair is not just a matter of aesthetics but also a tool for the government's control and compliance. Hairstyle regulations are strictly enforced, reflecting the government's views on tradition, gender and social unity. Women can choose from a list of about 18 specific hairstyles, usually simple and neat. These hairstyles are considered traditional and suitable for the state's moral standards. Modern or Western hairstyles such as long curly hair and brightly colored dyes are completely banned. Married women often have shorter hair compared to young unmarried women. Young women may have slightly more freedom in choosing their hairstyles but still must adhere to general regulations. If women do not comply with hairstyle regulations, they may face penalties such as fines, public criticism, or even forced haircuts. The North Korean government claims that managing women's hairstyles is aimed at maintaining social unity and preserving traditional values. Hairstyles are seen as a way to show respect for the country's leaders and ideology. Number 11. Travel Restrictions North Korean women face numerous restrictions on travel, both within and outside the country. To travel domestically they need special permission from the government. Traveling abroad is even more difficult, reserved for a select few women chosen by the authorities. These travel restrictions stem from the North Korean government's desire to tightly control women's activities and protect them from Western ideological influences. The government fears that exposure to the outside world might lead women to challenge its authority or even defect from the country. These harsh travel controls negatively impact many aspects of North Korean women's lives. They limit their freedom, hinder job and educational opportunities, and make it difficult to maintain family relationships. Women cannot freely travel within the country or abroad at will. This violates their basic freedom of movement and the right to choose their place of residence. Travel restrictions make it hard for women to seek jobs elsewhere or study at foreign universities, limiting their career prospects and personal development. Many North Korean women have families separated by war or migration. Travel restrictions make it challenging to visit relatives and maintain family ties. In recent years, the North Korean government has imposed additional travel restrictions, worsening women's isolation. In August 2020, the government created wide buffer zones of 1 to 2 kilometers along the northern border. Anyone attempting to cross this area without permission could be shot by border guards. In 2020, North Korea closed its border with China to prevent COVID-19. The border closure prevents women from traveling to China or visiting relatives there. The government also imposes strict restrictions on diplomats and foreign organization staff, limiting their movements outside Pyongyang and banning them from receiving diplomatic bags. Anyone returning to North Korea must undergo a one-month quarantine. This makes international travel very costly and difficult. Thousands of North Korean women are isolated from their families, friends, and the outside world, deprived of basic freedoms and opportunities for personal development. Number 10. Education not for women. The North Korean government consistently promotes the slogan of providing equal education for all. However, reality paints a much bleaker picture, especially for women. Their education is shaped by government beliefs and societal norms that emphasize traditional gender roles. Although North Korean women have access to basic education and boast high literacy rates, the type and level of education they receive are often limited by outdated gender views. Inequality in education is evident in many aspects. The curriculum is heavily influenced by state propaganda, focusing on praising on praising the ruling Kim family and promoting socialist ideology. This limits the scope and diversity of education, stifling critical thinking and creativity among students. Women are often directed toward fields deemed suitable for their gender, such as teaching and textiles, while men are encouraged to pursue sciences, engineering and leadership roles. This reinforces gender stereotypes and limits career opportunities for women. Opportunities for higher education and pursuing specialized fields are often restricted for women. They frequently face financial barriers, societal prejudices and family expectations to marry and care for children. Many female students, particularly those who are talented and intelligent, face pressure from family and society to drop out of school early to marry or do housework. This deprives them of the opportunity to study and develop their potential. Despite the challenges, there are glimmers of hope for women's education in North Korea. Some non-governmental organizations and international programs are working to improve learning conditions for female students, raise awareness about the importance of equal education, and empower women through education. Number 9. Media and Information Ban 
Women in this country have almost no freedom to think, express opinions or access information. The government imposes strict control over all media and harshly punishes those who attempt to access unauthorized content. Any media not approved by the government is considered antisocial and is strongly suppressed. They restrict phone access, block Chinese mobile services and arrest those who contact foreigners. Using the global internet is illegal. Only certain government officials, scientists and students are allowed to access the state-controlled intranet called Kwang Myong. North Korean leaders see the internet as a threat to their power because it can connect people and spread information and ideas contrary to official views. Women are deprived of freedom of speech and access to information about the outside world. They are limited in their ability to learn, grow and make informed decisions for themselves and their families. Information control also helps maintain the government's fear and control over the people. In December 2020, North Korea enacted the Anti-Reactionary Thought and Culture Law, banning the sharing of media content from South Korea, the US or Japan. Penalties for violating this law are severe, including execution. Even watching banned content can lead to 15 years of hard labor. Speaking, writing or singing in a South Korean style can result in up to two years of hard labor. Number 8. No career choices. The concept of career choice almost doesn't exist here. The government has complete control over labor assignments, and citizens do not have the freedom to choose their desired jobs. Especially for women, being assigned a job means a lifelong attachment to it. The main reason behind this system is to allow the government to easily manage resources in the collective economy. They calculate the labor needs for each sector and region, then assign citizens to appropriate positions. Employment in North Korea is mandatory, and anyone who refuses to comply faces severe penalties, including imprisonment or labor camps. This system negatively impacts the mindset and ambitions of North Korean youth. Most students have no dreams or specific goals for the future because they understand that pursuing their passions is impossible. They can only hope to be assigned a job and follow government orders. As a result, the North Korean economy lacks creative and dynamic human resources. When people are not encouraged to develop their potential and pursue their dreams, the country will struggle to achieve sustainable development in the future. Number 7. Main Breadwinners In North Korea, women bear the primary responsibility for earning money because their husbands receive meager wages working for the government or military. Despite North Korea being a patriarchal society, women are the main earners as the informal market economy has started to take shape. According to research by the Korean government's National Unification Institute, North Korean women earn more than 70% of the family income. They are mostly traders at informal markets that have flourished in recent years. According to Reuters, most North Korean men work low-paying jobs in government agencies or serve in the military. North Korea's centrally planned economy has not recovered from the collapse of the Soviet Union, which provided military and economic support to Pyongyang throughout the Cold War. This led to a famine in the 1990s, killing an estimated 800,000 to 1.5 million people. During this time, women had to sell animal feed mushrooms and scrap copper cables to feed their families. Experts say that women who control finances are increasingly seeking divorce because their husbands are not earning money. In recent years, the majority of people leaving North Korea for South Korea have been women. Not being tied to a workplace, they often have more freedom to move. Number 6. Marriage Traditions in North Korea Unlike many other countries, marriage in North Korea is not just a matter between two individuals but also depends on family arrangements and even government involvement. The choice of a spouse is often influenced by the family's desire to enhance social status or strengthen political relationships. Women's freedom to choose is significantly limited, especially for those from lower social classes. Romantic love is not the primary factor in North Korean marriages. Instead, marriage is viewed as a social obligation and an opportunity to strengthen family and lineage. Criteria for choosing a spouse often focus on social status, education and financial capability rather than personal affection. The North Korean government has strict regulations and restrictions on marriage. For example, couples must register their marriage with local authorities and follow state-prescribed ceremonies. Extravagant weddings are also restricted, especially for low-income families. Traditional North Korean weddings usually include a ritual of offering flowers at the mausoleum of Kim Illinois Il Sung and Kim Jong Il, showing respect to the leaders. Other ceremonies are conducted according to government regulations. There are some taboos in North Korean marriage, 
such as marrying on April 15th Kim Illinois Sung's birthday or February 16th Kim Jong Illinois's birthday, considered unlucky days. Additionally, some unique customs are preserved, such as borrowing wedding items for photos and then returning them, or government officials giving wedding gifts in dollars for well-off families. Number 5. Burden of Child Rearing Women here face many challenges when it comes to motherhood and raising children in a society full of difficulties. The government promotes the view that motherhood is a patriotic duty, linked to the noble mission of women to sustain and develop the country. North Korean women frequently give birth and raise children in conditions of material deprivation and inadequate medical services. Although the government emphasizes the role of motherhood, they lack practical support to ensure the health and well-being of women and their children. The focus on traditional motherhood forces women to prioritize family and housework over personal goals and careers. Nationalistic and ideological beliefs are strongly applied in child rearing, leaving women with little opportunity to develop themselves and pursue their passions. Although the government provides some support like maternity leave and childcare, these services are often limited and of inconsistent quality. The heavy demands of motherhood, combined with the lack of sufficient resources and support, can negatively impact women's health, mental well-being, and overall quality of life. The burden of motherhood and child-rearing often restricts women's ability to fully participate in public life and pursue careers. The emphasis on traditional family roles reinforces gender stereotypes, affecting the status and opportunities of women in North Korean society. Number 4. Need permission to live in the capital. Unlike South Korea, North Koreans do not have the freedom to choose where they live and work. These decisions are made by the state. Women have only two ways to leave their hometown graduating from a university in another area and staying to work there or getting married. However, marrying a man from Pyongyang is not easy. Thus, North Korean women face many restrictions on residing in the capital, Pyongyang. According to current laws and regulations, women are only allowed to live in Pyongyang if they have family there or have a legitimate reason approved by the authorities. A legitimate reason generally means being wealthy and influential, making it easier to get approval to live in Pyongyang, the largest city in the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Conversely, if you are poor, you can only dream of experiencing the city. To live in the capital, you need government approval and permission. This leads to many inequalities and negatively affects the lives of North Korean women. Restrictions on residing in Pyongyang hinder women's opportunities for education, work and personal development. It also separates them from their families and communities, causing significant mental and social challenges. Number 3 ban on unnatural hair colors. Hair color is often a way for people to express themselves in their individuality, but this does not apply to North Koreans, especially women. Here, the government imposes strict regulations on hair color, limiting the freedom of choice for the people. Instead of freely experimenting with vibrant colors like red, blue, or other bright shades, North Koreans are only allowed to dye their hair in natural colors like dark brown or other dark tones. This regulation stems from the government's desire to create uniformity in appearance, limiting individual prominence and reinforcing collective identity centered around the Kim dynasty and socialist values. Unusual hair colors are seen as symbols of individualism, posing a potential risk of rule violation and even defiance against the government. North Korean leaders uphold conservative values and strictly enforce appearance standards, restricting any signs of rebellion or challenge. Therefore, dyeing hair in bright colors or having unique hairstyles is viewed as contrary to these rules and a challenge to the government's authority. The ban on unnatural hair colors in North Korea exemplifies the government's tight control over the personal lives of its citizens. This regulation reflects the desire to impose uniformity in thought and behavior, limiting personal freedom and consolidating government power. Number 2. Fashion Police the fashion police play an important role in monitoring and controlling how people dress, particularly women in North Korea. These strict dress code regulations are enforced by this force, reflecting the government's belief that clothing is an expression of political stance. The fashion police, often members of government-backed youth organizations, are responsible for patrolling the streets and observing people's attire. Women must comply with stringent regulations, often including wearing skirts or long dresses, especially when not at work. Violations, including wearing pants, can result in penalties such as interrogation and criticism. The consequences of violating dress codes can be severe, including being sent to labor camps. 
The government uses these rules to control not only how people dress but also their thoughts. Recently, North Korea has intensified its crackdown on women wearing shorts during the hot summer. The government views shorts above the knee as symbols of capitalist culture and fashion. This effort aims to maintain socialist values and eliminate foreign influences. New laws enacted in 2020 prohibit actions such as watching or sharing South Korean and Western media, using South Korean slang, teaching dance to teenagers, and wearing inappropriate attire. Violating these laws can lead to imprisonment. Restrictions on women exposing skin below the knees are claimed by officials to preserve socialist traditions. However, many people are frustrated by the government's strict control over their clothing choices, especially in hot weather. Number 1. Must respect the leader. All North Koreans live under the rule of Kim Jong-un in. Women must swear loyalty and obedience to him, his family, and the state. Anything that can be considered disrespectful to the Kim family or the North Korean government is seen as blasphemy and is harshly punished. This applies to both North Korean citizens and tourists. Any perceived threat or insult can result in imprisonment or even execution. Even falling asleep during a meeting with Kim Jong-un is considered disloyalty to the leader and can lead to the death penalty. For example, in 2015, North Korean Defense Minister Hyun yong kol was executed by anti-aircraft fire in front of 100 people for such behavior, which included women in attendance. Many are also familiar with the case of American citizen and student Otto Warmbier, who was visiting North Korea as part of a guided tour group. He was arrested at Pyongyang International Airport while awaiting departure after attempting to steal a propaganda poster from his hotel. Warmbier was imprisoned and later released in a vegetative state, dying shortly afterward in June 2017. So we have explored the 23 strangest rules that North Korean women must follow. What do you think about these rules and would you want to visit North Korea to experience them? Do you have any other topics you'd like us to cover? Please comment and share your thoughts. Thank you for watching our video. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to get updates on our latest videos. See you in the next videos.